all righty then um welcome back to another session um if you've done the math one first i hope you um it wasn't too tricky it's obviously just a bit of exploratory task so nothing um nothing uh drastic to do lesson wise but try and um, explore different fractions and see what fractions are equivalent what fractions are the same uh, this is our literacy lesson though, and we're going to carry on our fiction writing, I think would be good because we we'll, we looked at setting description and we described the storm and I have some wonderful examples um, sent in to me and some people managed to uh, rip them and burn them and look like proper Viking scrolls. So well done to you guys and I'll try and get some of those back to you um, when I look at them. Uh, but you can use those same techniques and yes we describe a storm but you could describe a sunny day you could describe a snowstorm you could describe a that could just be the weather and you could you could use those skills and the adjectives of the expanded and the expanded L phrases that we looked at and the front of the verbials to hopefully describe other settings other than the weather yeah, so think about trying to use those same tactics to describe a castle or a um, a different setting like a jungle or whatever story you decide to write you'll need to describe the setting in which the characters are in so that we have a clear idea of where those um, characters are and then we need to look at this we need to look at describing our characters we need to we need the reader to know what those characters are like are they goodies are they baddies do they have um, specific features? What are their personality traits? We need to look at words and techniques to describe our characters as well. Um, we're going to be using this. Um, this is the film version, but it's a story that was originally by Roald Dahl called Fantastic Mr. Fox. I'm sure many of you have it or have read it. Um, so if you've got it, it would be a good idea to maybe read it this week um, alongside doing our work. There is a link here, and that link just takes you to if you type into fantastic if you type you uh, if you type fantastic Mr. Fox into YouTube, there is an audio description, and we have fantastic Mr. Fox here, and we're going to be looking at. Hopefully, you can see the three farmers of this book. So if you've got this book, have a go at reading it as well alongside the audio version. You could pause it and it goes through each page um, as well. So you can pause it and read each page if you prefer reading. Oh, lights out. So, yeah, we're going to be looking at some character description and some other grammatical and writing techniques that we can use in our story writing. I know a lot of you are quite keen novelists and um, like writing long stories. It's a good thing to start doing, um, exploring your imagination and writing it down and supplement that with lots of good reading. Um, Anyway, let's crack on because we've got a lot of reading and uh, tasks to do today. So, uh, where are we? Not there. Not there. That's maps. I've lost my plan today. Give me a sec. Right, I think we're back in business. Let me just double check. Yeah. So what we need to do today, my plan, we're going to read some extracts from Fantastic Mr. Fox, and then we're going to do some characterization. That just means we've done this before, where you have a character picture, you probably can draw them or get a picture, um, and we're going to find phrases from the text that tell us what those characters are like and then there's a little bit of a fun activity at the end to do too so 
the first thing we need to do is we're going to read chapter one. Um, I'll read it here, but you guys can. Um, I've got the text below so you can read, and I'll show you the pictures as well, so it might help you. Might do that later, actually, because pictures sometimes give you, um, they, they, they stop your imagination. Um, so here's chapter one, the three farmers, and we need to be thinking about, whilst I'm reading it, words that describe the farmers. What words, what adjectives have, has Roald Dahl used to describe the farmers? Um, right, you can read along with me or just listen, whatever you like to do. I've got a book here. Down in the valley, there were three farms. The owners of these farms had done well. They were rich men. They were also nasty men. All three of them were about as nasty and mean as any men could ever be. Their names were Farmer Boggis, Farmer Bunce, and Farmer Bee. Boggis was a chicken farmer. He kept thousands of chickens. He was enormously fat. This was because he ate three boiled chickens smothered with dumplings every day for breakfast, lunch, and supper. Bunce was a duck and goose farmer. He kept thousands of ducks and geese. He was kind of he was a kind of pot-bellied dwarf. He was so short his chin would have been underwater in the shallow end of any swimming pool in the world. His food was doughnuts and goose livers. He mashed the livers into the disgusting paste, then stuffed the paste into the doughnuts. This diet gave him a tummy ache and a beastly temper. Bean was a turkey and apple farmer. He kept thousands of turkeys in an orchard full of apple trees. He never ate any food at all. Instead, he drank gallons of strong cider. Or cider. Which he made from apples in his orchard. Uh, he was as thin as a pencil and the cleverest of them all. Boggis and Bunce and Bean, one fat, one short, one lean. Those horrible crooks, so different in looks, were nonetheless equally mean. And that there is an example of a, a bit like a limerick. It's got that limerick kind of beat to it. That is what the children around about used to sing when they saw them. That's the end of chapter one. Now I need to think about what words did Roald Dahl use to describe the farmers. Well, we know that they were rich men. And they were also nasty men. So that already paints an image in my mind. What does it mean to be rich and nasty and greedy? So... Then we've got these three farmers, so we'll do different colours. We'll do Farmer Boggis in green. We'll do Farmer Bruce in blue. You could just colour or underline these in pencil crayons if you've got pencil crayons. Um, oh. And we'll do Farmer Boggis in Let's go in pink. Boggis, Spunts and Bean. But, 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 what's that an example of? Boggis, Bunce and Bean. Right, so we've got Boggis. We need to go back to green, don't we? He's a chicken farmer, so that doesn't really tell us what he looks like, but it helps us think about um, what he does for a living. Enormously, he was enormously fat, so not just fat, enormously fat. What do you think it like we would look like if he ate three boiled chickens? What do you think that that kind of give him bad oily skin? What 
kind of picture are you painting in your mind when you're thinking of Farmer Boggess from those descriptions there? Right then, Bunce. He's a duck and goose farmer. He was a kind of pot-bellied dwarf. So a pot-bellied dwarf is when you're you look kind of you're not fat all round. You you look fairly normal, but your belly is really really out there. If it's just your belly that's fat, you might call somebody pot-bellied. I wouldn't go and call people pot-bellied though. And dwarf, that's a uh, a word for somebody who's really small, like a dwarf. He was so short, so he's really small, his chin would be under the water in the shallow end of any swimming pool, so he's short. It gave him a funny tummy ache, so maybe that's why his belly's so popped because he's eating all these horrible, donuty, pasty liver donuts. And then Bean. What was Bean like? What words can you find to describe Bean? I'll let you guys do that on your own. Super. Again, read it back to yourself if you want. Pause it, go back if you want to do this. And what um, words has Roldal used to describe the characters, the three farmers that we've been introduced? The next thing we have to do is look at chapter two. And there's another character in here. I think it's going to be Mr. Fox. As the title's called Mr. Fox. The chapter title's called Mr. Fox. Let's have a read of chapter two and let's see what the fox is like. On a hill above the valley there was a wood. In the wood there was a huge tree. Under the tree, there's a adverbial of where, under the tree there was a hole. In the hole lived Mr. Fox and Mrs. Fox, and there are four small foxes. What do we call baby foxes or small foxes? That's a little bit of a trick challenge question for you. Every evening, as soon as it got dark, Mr. Fox would say to Mrs. Fox, Well, my darling, what shall it be this time? A plump chicken from Boggis? A duck or a goose from Bunce? Or a nice turkey from Bean? Ooh. That sly old fox, he's got too much birds to choose from. And when Mr. Fox had told him what she wanted, Mr. Fox would creep down into the valley in the darkness of the night and help himself. How do you think the farmers would feel about this fox? Does that maybe change your description of the farmers? Are they, why are they so nasty? Boggess and Bunce and Bean knew very well what was going on, and it made them wild with rage. There were not men who liked to give anything away. Less still, they, less still did they like anything to be stolen from them. So every night, each of them would take his shotgun and hide in a dark place somewhere on the farm, hoping to catch the robber. But Mr. Fox was too clever for them. He always approached the farm with the wind blowing in his face. And this meant that if any man were lurking in the shadows ahead, the wind would carry the smell of that man to Mr. Fox's nose from far away. Thus, if Mr. Boggess was hiding behind his chicken house, number one, Mr. Fox would smell him out from 50 yards of a quickly changed direction. Heading for chicken house number four, at the other end of the farm, cutting Mr. Fox. Damn blast, that lousy beast, cried Boggess. I'd like to rip his guts out, said Bunce. He must be killed, cried Bean. But how, said Boggess, how on earth can we catch the blighter? Bean picked his nose delicately with a long finger. I have a plan, he said. You've never been a decent, you've never had a decent plan yet said Bunce. Shut up and listen, said Bean. Tomorrow night we will all hide just around the hole where the fox lives. We will wait there until he comes out. Then bang, bang, bang. Very clever, said Bunce. But first we shall have to find the hole. 
My dear Bunce, I have already found it, said the crafty bee. It's up in the wood on the hill. It's under a huge tree. So then you guys go back through there and what words. they used in there to describe Mr. Fox. So some of the words that I think he's sly and cunning like most foxes, but how do we know that? What uh, language does Roald Dahl use to suggest that this fox is crafty? How do the fathers feel about the fox? So you have a go through there. Remember to pause the video if you want to have a read yourself or go back through things. I shall put um I shall try and put these on uh, online as well so you can download them but um, I'll try my best with that. Um so that leads on to your first task which is to maybe give yourself a page and you could either is it in half or I want you to draw the characters of the farmers. I'm just going to do stick them for now, but your drawings are going to be, be much better. Got a peak hat because he's a farmer, rubbish, I know. Um, he's a chicken farmer, so I'll just do a little chicken. And then I want you to annotate that's when we draw labels and, and describe the farmers. So we know that, yeah angry aren't they? Why are they so angry? And then maybe have a go at I'm not too good at drawing foxes, I don't think. Really know what they look like. Oh this is really bad. Terrible. But it'll be for now. I have to get rid of his eyes, his eyes are a bit too creepy for me. Um Oh, this is really bad. It was better before. Do you have to draw that fox, finish that fox off? How do they draw the fox on here? Let's see if I can do him better than that. Didn't show off my artistic skills. Can you see here? He's got a long snout. His nose. Thumbs up. Pointy ear and pointy ear and down. That's better. It's a little bit better. Much there. Not by much. And then you want to describe the fox as well. Now have, have a read back through those chapters and see if you can do some characterization. What are those characters like? Just I'll, I'll know from your drawing and I'll know from your annotations as well. And then um, the last thing you can do, which is a bit of fun, is uh, here. So, Fantastic Mr. Fox and Boris Bunce and Bruce, they're examples of alliteration. Their names are alliterative. So can you, I think we've done this before maybe in class, can you give your name some uh, alliterative qualities? So mine would be Daring Mr. Davis or something like that. Can you give yourself an alliterative quality? And maybe do a picture of yourself with um, some annotations of why that alliteration applies to you. So you could call it you could be fantastic then, if you wanted to use the fantastic Mr. Fox example. You could be, we've got some amazing Anya or Brave Bella. Um, a lovely Lily. Super Sophia. You choose um, an alliterative name for yourself and write your tip down and maybe do a character description for yourself as well. Um, that's all for literally today. I will see you tomorrow. If you've got any questions, send me a message on DB Primary and I'll get back to you. Um, 
but yeah, I hope you guys had a good weekend and you're ready to do another fun week of learning. I will see you next time. Au revoir.